Hey everyone, my name is Juno. I'm a fourth year ENT otolaryngology resident. I want to make a really quick video about how to be helpful in the operating room, specifically before the actual surgery starts when you're preparing the patient for the operation. Um, I just didn't see that many videos like this on YouTube, so I'm just hoping that this can help a couple people out. And then in the background, I'm just gonna have a, a point of view video of me preparing a patient um, to come in. From the resident perspective, we just see a lot of variations in medical students. It can range from being very passive and not helpful to being attentive and very engaging with um, kind of helping out with the preparation. And I think that it's tricky to be helpful when it's your first time in the operating room or first time in a subsurgical specialty. Um, for myself, I remember the first time I went to the operating room, I was just so overwhelmed with all the new sights and sounds, and I just didn't have any exposures to any residents to act as a mentor in my own medical school. So that's partly why I wanted to make this video. Um, so for those people that don't get um, a good orientation, I hope that this can kind of help out. Here you'll see me just get some light cables and a camera set up for a laryngology case. That's why you saw me go to the scrub table and pick up some instruments. Um, certainly most of your cases will be a sterile case, so you definitely don't want to break the sterile field. For being a good med student in the operating room, at its baseline, it's all about pattern recognition. Hopefully you're rotating with a surgical service for multiple days, and the key is to pick up on routines and habits that occur in the operating room um, for each case. Now this video is coming from my experience as an ENT resident, but I'll just try to cover some general pre-op tasks that need to be done for most cases. The details of specific surgical subspecialties you might be rotating will, will be up to you really to pay attention to what's going on in the, in the operating room and acting upon them. Um, I'll go over just general tips as well and some very common pin questions that may arise from even prepping a patient. To start, it's important to recognize the players within the operating room. Obviously, you'll have your attending surgeon, and depending on your training program, there may be a resident. The other ancillary staff within the operating room include the nurse circulator and the surgical scrub tech. The scrub tech is the one that manages equipments and passes instruments during the operation, and the circulator is a nurse that helps out with many, many tasks. Um, such as getting supplies, passing specimen, organizing monitors, communication with the front desk, amongst many other responsibilities. That being said, as a medical student, as well as when you're a resident, you do your very best to keep your scrub tech and your nurse circulator happy with your presence. It's very likely to understand that um, they have a longer relationship with the attending surgeon than your short surgical rotation and just understanding that you are kind of like a visitor in their domain is kind of helpful. Um, and I always made it a point to just show them the utmost respect. Don't violate the sterile field and just be polite. Um, as a medical student, the very first thing I did when entering the operating room was to introduce myself to the scrub tech and the nurse circulator. Um, and this included writing my name on the whiteboard as well as saying medical student or resident. Um, and it's important to know that this is because one, they need to know who you are. And also the circulator has to log in all the individuals that are coming into the operating room, um, into the electronic medical record. After introducing myself, the next thing I would think about is getting my gloves and passing it off to my scrub tech. I'm going to skip ahead in this video. Um, when the patient comes into the room, this is when you can really, really shine as a medical student. There's just a lot of individual tasks that need to be done to prepare the patient for the operation. And if you show awareness and thoughtfulness in helping, the resident and the surgical team will notice. Um, I always made it a point to get my gloves on quickly. And the first thing is just help anesthesia or the transporter bring the patient into the room on their stretcher. Um, overall, you're just trying to get the patient over to the operating room bed from the stretcher, but there's just a lot of minutia to be aware of. Um, in general, I think about bringing the patient's stretcher next to the operating room bed. Um, at that time, the patient's probably sitting up in the stretcher 
and you can go ahead and help untie the gown um, that they have from pre-op because on the back we don't want the patient to be laying on any knots um, that might be on the gown itself. Then we have either myself or the circulator on the other side of the bed to help um, guide or shimmy the patient over to the operating room. Um, I always tell the patients that there's a big gap in the middle um, to be careful, and I have them use their hands to feel the sides of the beds and tell them to um, kind of shimmy themselves to be midline within the beds themselves so that they're centered. And then also important for anesthesia and also for ENT surgeries, um, but it's important to keep in mind where their he head lies um, because that's where um, anesthesia will need good access for intubation as well as for our ENT procedures. Here you can see that I was very ready to take the sheets off of the stretcher and then put it into <laughs> the correct linen bin there. Um, as a medical student, a great, great, great task is to help roll the stretcher back into the hallway. It looks like someone else is handling that for now. Um, and you can just see a lot of this is just a cadence of just moving back to back to back um, with helping prep the patient um, when you have a long operation day. So here it looks like I am handling, managing the legs of the patient themselves. These are sequential compression devices or SCDs. Um, this is actually a really common pin question that I've gotten before and it talks about the, the attending will ask you, what is the mechanism of um, SCDs? And the obvious answer that you would think that it is, is that it squeezes um, your blood vessels so you don't get clots. But the actual answer is that um, the mechanical squeezing of the endothelial cells within the blood vessels actually produces nitric oxide. And the nitric oxide causes a systemic effect to cause vasodilation within the body. So um, the consequence of that is that you can actually just put one SCD on one limb and you will have that anti-DVT effect um, within it. I thought that was kind of a cool pimp question that I've gotten before. Here I'm placing some heel protectors to prevent any pressure ulcers. Um, Again, each case is going to be different for whatever subspecialty you're on, but in general, um, you want to help at this point tuck in the arms, take the arm boards away, um, put a safety belt over. Um, this clip is actually going to end just because uh, we're about to start the operation, so that's why we have this new clip here. And again, all of these small tasks um, will be very dependent on what type of surgery you're doing, the attending, and the surgical team itself. Um, for example, tucking in the arms, um, it might just seem like a simple task, but there's actually a few ways to do it. Um, you can papoose, you can go over the drapes, under the drapes, and usually I just kind of follow the lead of the circulator um, and follow their preference. And the circulator and the scrub techs, um, and hopefully the resident attendings will be more than happy to teach you um, how to do it, and it's up to you to kind of learn that from that habit and kind of use that um, for future cases. And to round out this video, I kind of have a, f a few things that I've seen kind of all-star med students do, one of which is drawing up lidocaine. Obviously, you need permission from the circulator just to know how to do it correctly. Um, and it's actually, uh, you can have a really common pimp question, which is how much lidocaine can you give to a patient? Um, and the idea is that the maximum dose for lidocaine is five milligrams per kilogram, and the max dose with lidocaine and epi is actually higher at seven milligrams per kilogram. Um, I'm not gonna do a medicine lecture at this point, but um, something to know and just read about later on. Um, other things that I've seen great medical students do is offer to put in the Foley, um, shaving the surgical site. Again, another PIM question about shaving is, um, whether or not to shave, ask the patient to shave the day before versus shaving in the operating room. Um, long story short, you want to shave the day of surgery just because there's less bacterial load than if they have been asked to shave the day before. Um, and then great medical students um, will learn how to prep a surgical site. Um, this will vary extremely per subsurgical specialty um, and whether or not um, it's a tricky site to prep, ENT can be a little tricky itself and usually that's usually 
um, a resident's, resident's responsibility. And that's my whirlwind tour on helping prepare a patient for the operation as a medical student and kind of um, standing out with the pattern recognition. Um, hopefully that helps a few people out. Um, last little thing, as far as scrubbing etiquette, usually I just follow what the attending um, does. If they do a full scrub, then I'll do a full scrub. If they are doing um, Avigard or an equivalent quick scrub, then um, I'll be okay with doing that also. And as a last plug to the ENT potentials out there, um, bonus points for if you are able to do it. Um, there are certain things like putting in facial nerve monitors, helping out with the free flap donor site preparation, balancing the microscope, um, replacing the anesthesia tape with tegaderms over the eyes, and getting the scans over the computer, um, kind of things to think about. Um, and with that, I hope I helped a few people out. Um, good luck on your rotations, and please let me know if you have any questions.